All right. Hello, hello, ladies. Hello, all here on the call and everybody in YouTube land. Hello, hello. It is Monday, Mar uh, Monday March, <laughs> Monday, June 21st. And um, we are excited because we are starting a new series. And this series is pretty intense. Um, you know, we, we talk about broken families all the time, but we're going to talk about blessed families this week, a lot of blessed families and, and why we are called to be blessed families. But we're going to find out why we are all born into broken families. We're going to learn that today on this call. So I can't wait to share it with you. So before we start, I'm going to go ahead and go into prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, um, for this message, God, that you have for all of your ladies today. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch their hearts, God. I pray that you would um, let this message just seep into them, Father God, and I pray that they would receive from you, God. That I, And I pray, Lord, that, that it will be your words, Lord, and not my own. I pray, God, that you would just, um, just use me, God, to just to deliver this message, Father God. And I thank you, Jesus, for talking to me through this message and for talking to all of these amazing women, God, who are on this call that represent all these families, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We come against any spirit of um, any hindrance, God, any spirit of uh, jealousy, any spirit of doubt, any spirit of envy, God, anything that would hinder your message, God. We come against those right now in your mighty name, Jesus. And we thank you, Father, and, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, ladies, we are going to go into this. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, oh, let me, I should, there you go. Okay. To the call today. So today we're talking about um, broken families. Okay. So I want you to get your Bible out. If you have your Bible, we're going to be in Genesis three. Okay. And if you don't have your Bible out, it's okay. You can take notes, but definitely write this down. I'm going to read these scriptures to you, but if you have your Bible, absolutely um, have it uh, with you to follow along. So we are, um, we're covering every area of families this week, right? We're going to, we're going to talk about, you know, um, you know, every scenario, scenario when it comes to families. Um, and, and this today we're talking about broken, right? Um, and, um, broken families is important because we wonder, oh my gosh, yes, I have a broken family or my family was broken or, you know, um, or even if you came from a Christian family who is such a good Christian family, right? Um, we are all broken. All of us doesn't matter, you know, um, because even they, the parents, were are, are come from broken because we all come from our, from our spiritual parents, which are Adam and Eve, who originally, you know, were the first perfect couple and then fell, right? And we're going to talk about that today, the fall of man. So um, we all have biological DNA characteristics from Adam and Eve. That's what we have, right? Um, and we also have spiritual DNA. Right. So biologically we have it and then spiritually we have it. And you're going to see why this it, this is into your family now, why it matters. Right. So I'm going to go into Genesis three and we're going to go from uh, Genesis three and one through six. OK, so just follow along here. It says so this is under the fall of man. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said. You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. So you can see right there, he's already casting doubt, right? Into, um, into, you know, to the woman. He says, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. Very clear right there, right? The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die, right? For God, so he's lying, right? So for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Do you see that, that part right there? Her husband with her, he was with her <laughs> when he heard all that. So they can't be like, oh, it was the woman that, no, he was with her, he heard it and he, and they ate, okay? So really, really important to know. So we're gonna talk about um, the three results that come from the fall of Adam and Eve that affects us today, okay? These are the three results that come from Adam and Eve, from the fall of Adam and Eve that, that um, 
affects us today. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is shame. Shame. Okay. When sin came in, they felt shame immediately, right? I'm going to go into Genesis 3, 7 through 11. Okay. Then the eyes of both of them were open. So after they ate, immediately the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed uh, fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And here's the famous saying that we talk about all the time, right? And, and he said, who told you? Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Okay, so there were only two people in the garden. So what were they hiding from? Right, they were hiding from God and they were hiding from themselves. But yet they've been naked this entire time with each other. But now all of a sudden they feel shame and now they're hiding from God and they're hiding from themselves. So they made themselves clothing to cover the shame. Okay, they made themselves clothing to cover the shame. So in, in verse three, we're going to jump down to verse 321. Okay, and he says, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and, and, and his wife and clothed them. Okay, this is really, hold on, son. Okay, tell daddy video. Okay. Um, this is really important to know because God made them clothes in 21. Okay. In verse one, he made them clothes. He made them from animal skin. Okay. So therefore what had to happen? He had to shed blood to clothe them. Right. The only thing that will cover shame is blood. Later on, whose blood covers our shame? The blood of Jesus, right? Later on, the blood of Jesus came. Look at how it's all, it all goes together, right? So this shame isn't in the natural, it's in the spiritual, right? Because naturally they had already been naked. They've already been together doing it. They've been walking around, you know, and now all of a sudden, you know, spiritually now they're in shame, okay? So I'm going to read just two scriptures really quick um, just to add to this. In Revelations 3.18, it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shameful nakedness and self put on your eyes so you can see. Okay. So to cover your shameful nakedness. Also in Isaiah 61 10, it says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. Okay. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, he arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. It's really important um, scriptures to hold on to as well, right? Because righteous, what does righteousness mean? Okay. Righteousness means it's in the right standing with God. Okay. That doesn't mean that you're righteous and now you're never going to sin right? No, you're, you're, you're going to fall. You're going to fall down, but God, you're, you, you know, you got to choose to receive Jesus and live for him. Right. That doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect, that you're going to walk with him. Right. So the second thing that you're that, um, that caused, uh, what we, the result from the fall that affects us is blame. This is really big, right? Blame. Um, I'm going to go into Genesis three eleven. Okay. In Genesis three eleven, listen to this. He says, um, God says, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you not eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And look at what the man said. The man said, the woman whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me the, the tree and I ate, right? So he said, the, <laughs> the woman. So he immediately went to the woman, blamed her. And then who else did he blame? Who you gave me, Right? look at that two two big blamers right there right so and then it doesn't stop there because then the lord god said to the woman what is it that you have done and the woman said the serpent deceived me and i ate so i have what did she do she went out and blamed as well right so we all of a sudden we're playing the blame game you know so man blamed woman and god and then woman blamed the devil right she blamed satan right when we blame others 
our kids blame others. They, that came from the spiritual parents, Adam and Eve, right? So why, why do our kids always say, they did it, they did it. No, I didn't do that because they, you know, they did that to me, right? That's all spiritual. It's coming down, right? So have you blamed someone recently? Have you blamed someone and said, well, you didn't No, it was your fault. No accountability over here. It's your fault. You did it. It's all your fault, right? So um, Adam and Eve took no accountability at all, right? They did not, they did not for a second say, oh, you know what? It was, it was, you know, probably me. I did it. I listened to the voice I shouldn't have listened to, right? You know, so have you done that recently? We have to look inward. That's why when I say, when you go to somebody, you confront them, it's never, you did this to me. It's what could I have done? Maybe I did something. Do I have expectations for people? Do I, you know, expect them to be a certain way, a certain type of friend? Do I expect stuff from them? You know, do I expect them to be a certain type of parent to me? You know, um, we have expectations, right? So when it comes to blame, this is usually what happens, right? When it comes to blame, we either blame others or we blame ourselves. It's all my fault. I, you know, all, I, it's all my fault. Blame me, you know, or do we blame others, right? So um, it's, it's, either, it's either or, right? And this is because of the fall of man, because we're not supposed to have blame, right? How many live in bitterness? How many people are living in bitterness right now that they stop talking, you know, they're against people. Yeah, but I know that, that you know, these women, you know, I can't be friends with them because they, they're going to turn on me or they're not going to be the, the type of friend that I need them to be. They're going to eventually do something or they're going to come after my man or they're going to, you know, they're going to betray me in some way, right? You have, a, you hold a bitterness immediately already, like a precept, right? A thought about people. You know, what about God? Well, God, you didn't um, bless me in my finances and I've been walking with you and you haven't blessed me in that. So, you know, you, you, you start to develop a root of bitterness, right? And you start thinking, well, why am I still sick, God? Why do I still have illnesses? Why do I still have this, um, um, whatever it is in my life that that's holding me back? You know, it's, it's, oh, because you don't have favor over my life, right? We start blaming things, right? Um, and then we start passive aggressively blaming things, right? We're, we're good at that too. You know, maybe it's a promotion at your job. Well, you haven't, you know, um, promoted me at my job and I've been walking with you and I've been tithing. And, you know, so obviously you, you, you're, you're, you're not listening to me. You know, you start blaming God in all these areas, you know, but we're not meant to live with blame. We're not meant to. The enemy is a blame maker. Okay. The enemy is a blame maker. He's actually, he's an accuser. He's an accuser. Let me go over to Revelation 12, 10. have that one ready. <laughs> Revelation 12, 10. Okay. It says, then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our, of our God and the authority of, of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night. The enemy is the accuser of our God, right? He is the accuser, uh, accuser of brethren, okay? He, brethren, what does that mean? Oh, it's just the men. No, brethren is women, is mankind, okay? Women and men. He's accuser of everything. Have you, have you accused um, your, your brothers and sisters? Have you blamed them before, you know, realizing that's my brother and sister in Christ? Why am I blaming them? They're not perfect, why am I expecting them to be perfect just because I'm walking with Christ? They should be walking with Christ the same way I am. How come they're not getting it, right? No, we don't do that. We're all human, right? So there's too many accusations going on in the body of Christ. There's not enough in love and forgiveness. There's not enough of that. Too many, too many. Well, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they said it to me. Their tone was so rude. You should have seen that text message. Oh, I hear it all the time, right? And, um, and I have been there and probably still, I'm sorry, I'm still guilty of that. <laughs> they're like, man, were they, were they rude? Were they, they were, oh, they're not nice. They're not happy. They're not, they're being rude to me, right? What is it? You know, before you accuse, you, you know, your brothers and sisters, you got to remember that that's your brother and sister in Christ, right? Before you accuse, remember that. Um, I, I was teasing my husband this morning because um, this pastor was talking about his child and how his child was saying, um, all the time, like that hit her phone was missing. Someone stole my phone, right? And you're like, well, are you sure someone stole it or did it just get misplaced, 
right? And I was teasing Kyle because he always comes in like, where's this? Where's this? Where's my phone? Or where is this? Um, whatever, whatever he's looking for, you know, and um, like, probably right where you left it, Kai. And he, no, it was there. And it, it's not there anymore. And like, that's his whole, that's his first thing every single time. I'm like, really? So now I'm like, okay, he's going to find it. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, I found it. Where was it, Kai? Oh, right where I left. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> okay. And so I was teasing him. And I was like, you know, that's being an accuser because that's passively aggressively accusing people of moving your stuff when they didn't touch your stuff, but you just forgot that you had it there. Right. So it's, it's, um, <laughs> he's working on that, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, it's true. You know, like we always think it's someone else's fault rather than looking at what did I, what could I have done? Where could it have been? Okay. It's getting so good, you guys. Oh my gosh. I seriously was loving this, um, this series today. So, all right. Number three. Okay. The third thing that re that the fall of man resulted in, you know, that we are affected by is fame. Okay. So we went from shame to blame and now we're at fame. Okay. And we're not talking about being famous. Okay. We're talking about, um, this need and desire to want to be recognized. And who, who can openly admit that? Yeah, I like to be recognized. Yeah, I like to be acknowledged. Yeah, okay, good job. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there you go. It's good. It's good to do that because we all have it. <laughs> no matter what. No, that's not me. Yes, you do. You have it, okay? Because it's an insecurity that we all developed, right? We all developed. How come I don't get to teach on the calls? How come I don't get to speak at the, at the events? How come I don't get to, you know, it's, there's just that insecurity that we have right? That we all receive from our spiritual parents. So don't think, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? No, we all have it. Okay. <laughs> we all have it. So I'm, look, look, I thought this, I love the way this pastor just breaks things down. You know, I want to, so in that, um, that scripture in verses 14 and 15 of Genesis three, okay. In the 14 and 15 verses, God is announcing the curse that came on the serpent because of what the enemy did, right? because of what the serpent did. Right. So in 14 and 15, he's announcing that curse over the serpent, right? Because after they made all those, th those choices that they all made, he's announcing that. In verse 16, God announces the curse that came on Eve, okay? And then on verse 17 through 19, God announces the curse that came on to Adam, okay? So here's God saying, you, you know, here's the curse that, you know, and this is not God cursing them. We want to make sure that's clear because God didn't curse them. Okay. He told them about the curse that, that they brought onto themselves. Cause what did he say? If you do, if you eat from the tree, right, you're, you're going to receive death. He said that then they chose to still do it. Okay. So now he's telling them, these are the curses that you guys brought onto yourself. So here they are. Okay. It's because of what they did that, 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 um, because of their choices that they made, that they brought this onto themselves. So after the, the, the 19th verse, when, after God announces all the curses, right. For, for the serpent, for Adam and for Eve now in 20, I want to read number 20. Okay. In number 20, it says, now the man called his wife's name Eve. This is, I want you guys to fall onto this because this is so big. And now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Okay. So Eve means life, mother of all living. Okay. So listen to this. This is so good. You guys, before the fall, Adam said, woman, you are bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. We are one. We are together, right? We're together. We're as one. And then what happened after the fall? Immediately after the fall, he labeled her. He called her Eve. God didn't name her. Is this crazy? Is this blowing your mind right now? Okay, I know, I know. Okay, Adam labeled her Eve. What, how, what does that mean? He separated her. He separated her. He labeled her and it was distinct of him. She was distinct of him. Like she, he separated her, okay? And he said, your purpose is to um, bear children. Bear me some children. That's your purpose right? <laughs> Who in here is like, excuse me? <laughs> excuse me. No, you did it. Oh, no, you did it. Okay. Her name. Now, now we're going to go into this. Okay. Her name was not Eve. Okay. Not until Adam gave it to her. This is amazing. God did not name her. Now let me go into Genesis five. Okay. Genesis five, two. Okay. He created them male and female. 
he blessed them and named them man in the day when they are created. Okay, the name Adam, it does not mean man, it means mankind. Do you get that? The name Adam does not mean man, it means man, mankind. God makes them as one. They are mankind. They are mankind. The two are one. He called them Adam. They were Adam. It wasn't until the fall of man that Adam said, no, you're Eve. You're Eve, I'm Adam. Is this crazy? When sin came in, they separated. Look at what happens. When sin came in, they separated. So many women struggle with this. So many think, well, my only purpose is to be a mother. My only purpose is to be a mother. I'm just going to be the best mother. Yeah, you know, and yes, it's great. It's, it's great to be a mother. It is fulfilling to be a mother, right? It is, but it's not your only purpose and it's not your greatest calling. Is that crazy? It's not your greatest calling. Your highest calling is to be a child of God. And when you're a child of God, then you're going to be an amazing um, mother, an amazing wife, when you're an amazing child of God, right? When you're a child of God, be an amazing sister, amazing friend. Everyone has a gift and a calling from God. Some women think when their kids move out that, oh, my, my calling has been fulfilled. My purpose has been fulfilled. And then what happens? They go into depression. There's a lot of women that go into depression after their kids move out. They call it the empty nest, right? Or when their kids leave them or something happens, you know, um, they, they start just going into this depression because they thought that their greatest calling in life was to be a mother, but that is not what God, God didn't. He, yes, you're going to be a great mother because you're a great child of God, right? So everyone has a gift and a calling from God. All right. We all receive the gifts in first Corinthians. He talks about God gives gifts to each one male or female. It's not just talking about the males, the men, right? So, so immediately Adam labeled her and, and you know what happened in that moment? Competition happened. Competition, right? Immediately men and women, they're, they're competing against each other now, right? Their voice has to be louder. Like there's just, there's something. So th now, now, we can keep going and it also goes into the children right because look at cain and abel what happened with them right cain and abel got really uh jealous and competitive and they you know they had a desire for attention and what did that lead to it led to death right it led to murder destruction because of two brothers right that needed they had the they had the desire to be known they needed the desire to have the attention they needed to speak. They needed to hear. They needed to be, you know, the loudest ones. So our kids, like, you know, when our kids, um, when you're trying to compliment, like for us, like I make sure when I compliment my kids and they're all in the room, I'm like, great job. You too. Great job to you. And you too. I have three. So if we have 10. I'm sorry. <laughs> great, great job to all of you. Right. But you have like, when we buy them something, I don't buy just one thing. If I'm going to buy someone a gift, I'm going to buy all three of them a gift because I don't want to create that jealousy that what about me right i don't want to leave room for that right and you know however you feel led to do that that's just how we are if all if my kid wants to play sports if rahana wants to play sports then guess what all three are going to play sports what do you want to play what or, or if they want to she wants to do sports she wants to do dance what would happen what would be uh, make you happy what do you want to do i'm not going to put one in sports and say well how come they just got to play sports you only had money for them to play sports and not for me mama and daddy better find a way to make sure that you guys can all play, right? Like, I don't want to leave anything out for that. Um, Kyle, when he was in school, like, you know, um, Kyle's brother, Kevin, uh, you guys have, don't know Kevin, but he does have a brother <laughs> who's, who looks almost like him. And um, he's an older brother. And Kevin was the very outgoing um, life of the party everywhere he went, right? So every time Kevin uh, came out of school, Kyle then was at the next level coming out, you know, into his grade. And they would always tell Kyle, oh, you're the little brother of Kevin. Oh man, Kevin's great. You know, or they would say, or man, that guy's crazy. Or they'll say something, right? But they always called Kyle the little brother, which made Kyle put fire under him to be known. 
he wanted to be known. He didn't want to be known as he was just part of the family, just part of the little brother. He wanted to be somebody, right? He wanted to be like, I don't want to just be the little brother. I, you know, so he would, you know, then he would push himself to go and be the best that he can be at all these things, the sports and everything. And he did, you know, but um, we, we lead to, we tend to compare, you know, you tend to compare because of what you see, you know, and um, comparison can lead to rebellion. This type of thing, when your kids are comparing themselves against each other, they can start rebelling. Well, how come you love them more? How come you, you did that with them more, right? Like it, it just, it, it develops, but also adults as well. It's not just the kids. It starts with the kids, right? Because they, they see it, but the, as an adult, it, start, it goes into your adulthood and you start comparing yourself to other women. How come they have that? That's awesome that they have that. Why not me, right? We start thinking of those things. How come, you know, we just start doing this. So, you know, it's who seeks attention. Can you think of people in your life right now who are always have to be the loudest, who always have something to say, who always has a comment, who always wants to make sure that they get their point across, right? That always wants attention. They say, oh, I don't, I don't like attention, but they actually do because it's not what they say, it's what they do. Sorry, it's action, right? So um, do they always have drama? Oh, are they always bringing you drama? Is there always some kind of story coming up? Always some kind of controversy in their circle of so-and-so did this to me, they did this to me, or, you know, can you believe, right? Is, is that something? Is that you? That's the hardest question. Oh, shoot. <laughs> God's talking to some people today, okay? Um, he wants, you know, they always want to show that they are somebody like, well, don't you know that I do this, but I've done all of this, but don't you see what I did? You know, the people like, you know, um, don't you see that I go out and help the homeless? Don't you see that I go out and feed and, 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 you know, donate? Don't you see that I go and help all these people, right? It's attention. It's a spirit of attention. Why do you need the attention? God, well, Cause God says that he'll bless what you do in, in private, but for the things that, you know what I mean? He will bless you in the private place. He will not bless you in the public place, right? You're supposed to do those things. So, you know, Paul says to the, you know, the church of Galatia, right? You're, you're, um, that's great that you do all these things, but you're supposed to do that. Where's your heart, right? So it's attention, it's enemy, right? So Satan told them that they would be like God if they ate the fruit. Well, they were already like God, right? So what is Satan telling you now? What's the enemy telling you? You know, he has lots of little demons roaming around. What are they telling you? Who told you? Who told you that you can't speak? Who told you that you can't um, get that promotion, that you can't make it out, that you can't survive, right? Who told you these things? In Acts 3.25, it says, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, this is in regards to Abraham. How awesome is that? That in, in your seed, all the families, he says that in scripture, all the families, of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, here's a story. I thought this is a very interesting story. There's this um, this man. His name is William Cowper. William Cowper. Okay, he had um, this this man. He's in Europe. Um, he had a very very sinful past. Very sinful past. Very immoral. You know. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys know. It doesn't matter how bad your past is. When you accept Jesus into your life, Jesus washes away everything you've ever done right? He washes it away. So don't ever feel like, yeah, but you don't know what I've done and what I've just done or no. But when you say, Jesus, please cleanse me, forgive me of my sins. That's what he does. He doesn't bring it back. Okay. But this guy had a very sinful, very immoral past. Okay. But he was miraculously saved. He asked Jesus into his heart. God started blessing him. Started just, um, you know, um, just getting his life in order. And then, uh, he was offered a position as a clerk at his home church right? And this is a really prestigious role. He really wanted it, right? So he was so excited about it. And they told him, okay, well, we're going to have a public examination, you know, of, of your life. And he, he was so scared. He was so discouraged. Imagine that if they're going to have, you, you have this amazing promotion, they're going to say, all right, now we're going to go and we're going to publicly examine your life. What, do you, what would you do? Wouldn't you feel discouraged? And he did. He felt so scared, so embarrassed, so discouraged that they're going to bring up his past. And um, so he, he actually got so, so discouraged that he attempted to commit suicide four times. Crazy, right? Now, let me tell you this, like suicide is not a funny thing at all. Okay. It is not funny. However, this man 
the fact that he tried so many times and, and it wasn't, it, God did not allow it to happen. You guys, I'm going to tell you, and it's funny. It's not the word, but it's just like, gosh, God, look at what you can do. Right. His first attempt, he tried to jump off a bridge. And when he got up there, he realized he was afraid of heights. So he came back down. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The second attempt, he bought, a, he bought a bottle of poison on his way home. And as he was walking into the house, he uh, dropped it, shattered it. Okay. His third attempt is he, he tied a noose a rope to his, the beam of his house, right? And he jumped and the beam broke. Okay. The fourth attempt, he gets a knife and he's like, that's it. You know, and he, he tries to stab himself and the blade breaks. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Right. So he, he was so discouraged and exhausted that he couldn't even, uh, you know, commit suicide. Right. And he fell asleep. He fell asleep into this, this, this deep sleep. And, and in that sleep, God spoke to him and God told him, you know, um, just the, all the beautiful things, right. That God wants to tell you. And he was able to hear God. And, um, and immediately the shame was removed from his life. Like he felt no shame, right. He, he actually wrote a hymn and I, I didn't know this song. So I'm, so I'm not going to tell it to you, but it's a, it's a really a popular hymn in the, in the church, which are the words that God spoke to him through this thing. And I'll, I can put it in there when I can find it. But um, so then he ended up going to the, the public examination and you know what he did? He opened up with his past. That's how he opened up. He said, here is here. All of it is here is it all right. Here is everything that I've done. And in that testimony of him speaking those words, so many lives were given to Jesus in just the testimony of that. Right. So this is shame is not meant to be on you. Right. We hear about this all the time. You're not meant to be in shame. You know, the devil says shame on you. What does God say? He says shame off of you, off of you. You're not meant to be in shame. I didn't say that. Who told you those things? I want you to remember that when the enemy creeps in and starts telling you, oh, don't hang out with those girls. They're not, you know, they're going to betray you. They're going to turn their backs on you. Who told you that? Right. When they, when you're trying to uh, trust your husband and, you know, you're like, how about he's going to, he's going to um, be with somebody who's going to do whatever. Like who told you that? Right. Oh, these people are going to steal from me. Who, who told you that you're going to be sick for the rest of your life. Who told you that? Right. Oh, I'm going to live in poverty. I'm never going to have a good job. I'm going to be poor and I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. Who told you that? Who, who's whispering in your ear? God wouldn't say that. Not our father right? Not our father. Our God says you have life and you have life abundantly, right? He says that when you get to heaven, you're going to be walking on streets of gold. He says that what you do here, you're, what you lose here on earth, you're going to loosen heaven, right? So if you're, you're going to, you're, what you bind here on earth, you're going to bind in heaven, right? You got to know that, that God is for you. God is for you. He loves you. Oh my gosh, I did it again. I'm so sorry. I went over my time. Okay. I'm ending it. All right. <laughs> Jeez, I did not look at my time. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go into prayer. Father God, I just, I lift up every single woman on this call, God, to you right now, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would just, um, just wrap your arms around them, Lord, right where they're at. I pray, Lord, that you would just let them know, God, that you are not a God of condemnation, God, but that you are lovingly convicting, God, that you tell us, Lord, what we need to do, God, so that we can walk righteously with you, God. Lord, that when we, we just receive you into our hearts, God, that you would um, walk with us, God, that you would not leave us like you never have, God. Lord, you have gifts and you have um, freedom, Lord, for every single child that you have, God, every single person born on this earth, God. It's just up to us to believe that, God. So I thank you. I praise you, Lord. I love you so much, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. In your, in your name, we pray. And Lord, ladies, I want to... Um, invite you if there's anybody on the call right now that has not um received jesus into your heart anybody out there that's watching the video as well if you have not received jesus to live in you to wash away every single sin to wash away every single stain that the enemy has put on you in your life every generational curse that the enemy has tried to tell you about and tell you that that's just how it is. If you, you, if you need God to come in there and wash that away, I invite you right now to raise your hand to um, 
make an emoji or something. And we want to pray for you right now to receive Jesus because he is the only, he is the way maker, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the father except through him. There is no other God, but God, but Jesus, there is no other God, but Jesus. He is the only way, right? So um, if you want to receive him today, he loves you right where you're at, right where you're at. Want to say something? And if not, if you are out there on YouTube, YouTube land and you guys, you guys raised your hand or you said, yes, that's me. Um, we're going to pray for you. And I also want to say if there's anybody here who, who has fallen off track, listen, God's not upset with you. He's not angry with you. He loves you. And he wants you right back where he's, he's a pro like he's the story of the prodigal son, right? He's there with his arms, right? Open, ready to lay the robe of righteousness on you. Right. And to receive you back to where you are, where you belong, which is in his arms, right into the heavenly kingdom. So if that's you and you want to just get rededicated today, you can also raise your hand. I'll wait a second. Okay. And if you did that on, on social media, uh, YouTube world, we're going to go ahead and can, and pray. All right, so just repeat after me, ladies. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Please live in me so that I can live for you every day of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for washing away every stain, every hurt, every pain. And thank you, for filling me up with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the keys to the kingdom on this day. Thank you, Jesus. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father God, I lift up all the women, Lord, who um, who have walked away, God, that, um, that took a break, God, or who just chose to do some other things, Lord. Lord, you're not upset, God, and we just want to lift them to you right now, God. So I pray, Lord, for all these women, Lord, that you would just um, wrap your arms around them, Lord. Let them know how loved they are, God, that you um, that you will meet them, Lord, right where they're at, God, that you don't carry all of the past um, to your memory, God, that you're holding it against them, God, that you said that when you come back to me, that you're going to uh, wash it away, God. So we thank you, Lord, for washing away all the hurts, Lord, all, all the pain, all the sins, God, of your children, God, and you are walking with them and they are rededicated to you, God. Thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let me see.